I thank the chairman uh, for yielding time and also thank the chairman and ranking member for their work on this very important piece of legislation. Around the world, big game like elephants and rhinos are getting slaughtered. Ivory-seeking poachers have killed 100,000 elephants in three years. The black rhino population has dropped 95 percent since the early 20th century. In 2007, there were 12 rhinos killed in South Africa, 12. But in 2013 and 2014, over 1,000 were killed each year. Regarding elephants, this is a photograph of one of the oldest elephants in existence. Sato was his name. He was in his 40s, and he was killed for his tusk so long that they drugged the ground. And that is what is happening to the elephant population in Africa. They're killed not for their meat, they're killed for their tusks. And most of the people doing the poaching are really not the locals who poach for an animal to eat. That's not most of the poaching, although that does occur. Most of those doing the poaching are transnational criminal organizations. The criminal group groups come from places like China and Vietnam. China is the number one destination for elephant tusk. Vietnam is the number one world destination for rhino horns. And criminal cartels that are involved in this trafficking, uh, they don't just traffic wildlife, but they traffic drugs, weapons, and people. It's all the same group of criminals that are trafficking. They traffic anything for money. The wildlife trafficking trade has been exploited, has exploited in recent years because of the criminals understanding that the profits they get from trafficking is bigger than what they get from trafficking drugs. Also, the chances of getting caught are less, and if caught, the punishment is less. So that's why wildlife trafficking is on the increase. A rhino horn is now worth about $27,000 a pound. That's twice the value of gold and platinum and more than cocaine and diamonds. It should come to no surprise that terrorist groups are involved in this as well. I held a hearing in my subcommittee in February on the connection between wildlife trafficking and terrorist groups. The witnesses testified that terrorists are one of several groups involved in wildlife trafficking, and of course they do it all for the money. They use the money as Mr. Engel said, to buy bullets and guns to cause terror in Africa and other places in the world. Just over the weekend, al-Qaeda's Somali affiliate al-Shabaab released photographs of its fighters just hunting and killing a giraffe. Here's a photograph. Of that giraffe that was killed in Africa. It's a recruiting poster for jihad. Al-Shabaab put on its recruiting poster, uh, recently video, this recent video says, terrorism is in my nation and we do it for tourism. Therefore, come and help us in jihad. It's a recruiting poster, the killing of wildlife in Africa. Killing of elephants is a main revenue source for the Lord's resistant army, led by the infamous Joseph Coney. By going after wildlife traffickers, we're going after transnational criminal organizations and terrorists. But we also must call out, as this legislation does, corrupt government officials that give a wink and a nod for the allowing of poaching in their countries of rhinos, elephants, and others. This isn't a wildlife problem, it's a national security problem. So this bill will give our law enforcement the authority it needs to be able to go after the criminals and terrorists and help foreign governments save rhinos and elephants from extinction. The gentleman's time. I yield the gentleman an additional minute, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the gentleman. Mr. Speaker, if we don't stop wildlife trafficking of rhinos, elephants, and other animals by terrorist groups, organized criminal activities, the only places our kids and grandkids are going to see rhinos and elephants are at the zoo or in a Disney cartoon. And that's just the way it is. I yield back.